Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. And today I got the three and a half horsepower Mercury out once again, and I'm going to go over and do a full service on it or nearly full service and show you just how easy it is to work on these small outboards. And that way, if you're thinking about taking it to a shop, well, consider doing it at home. You're gonna save hundreds of dollars and it's really simple. When you take the cowling off, you have your service information here. This provides some great base information. Just tells you what to replace things, such as like the spark plug and water pump every 300 hours, every 100 hours. Uh, you need to change the gear lubricant, the engine oil and filter. We don't have a filter and lubrication points. So we're going to be doing the 100 hour day as well as one of the 300 hour service items. We'll go through all that. The only thing we're not doing is changing the impeller. Uh, this water is pumping fine, so there's just no reason to quite yet. Before you start servicing, you wanna make sure that your engine is at 90 degrees so everything is nice and flat. If you can achieve this, get as close as you can, but if your engine's up here, say on the boat, go ahead and pull your pin out, put your engine on the lowest position, try to find stable ground that's level, pop that pin back in, and there you go. Now your engine is level, you're ready to begin the service. Now to start the fluid changes and everything, we're gonna start with the engine oil. So. I'm going to remove this fill cap, that way I don't have a vacuum on the system. And then I'm going to remove this plug on the bottom, that's the engine oil. And I'll just uncrack that, we'll come to the end of the threads. Just let it go to the side, and you see there's a gasket on there. This gasket looks good, I'm not going to replace it this time, however if I saw where it was pinched or anything of that nature, I would strongly consider changing this gasket out, you can either get a crush washer or one of these rubber ones. With the oil changed, I'm gonna do a quick visual inspection. Now I do have some form material in here from some previous projects I did in this oil pan, but I'm looking for metal flakes. Now, small amounts of metal flakes is fine, especially since we don't have a filter on this engine, you're going to see a little bit of that when you drain it. However, you start seeing larger chunks or a significant amount, and it'll be pretty obvious, like you're oil is almost glistening like glitter in it, silver glitter, then you might have some other things going on. But in this case, this oil is looking great. I see a few small metal particles, but that's just very light engine wear from running it. So I'm very happy with this color is decent as well, not too old. We're gonna go ahead and fill it back up. I always start bolts going to the engine by hand. That way I make sure I don't cross thread anything. Once we get it there, this doesn't have to be extremely tight, it just needs to be snug. So put it about right there, and that's plenty. That's gonna keep that engine oil in. Engine oil right here, Quicksilver Marine Lubricants. This is basically the uh, stuff Mercury uses. Um, if you do get Mercury oil, that's basically just Quicksilver stuff that is remarketed and put into different packaging. I wanna keep it level and just pour up to that 300 milliliter mark. I'm gonna stick that in, undo my cap. There we go. We've got the oil changed that quickly and easily. Pull, pull this out, I'm gonna go ahead and cap it real quick. And to verify that you're at the right oil level, right here is a, is a viewing glass. Whereas normally you have a dipstick or something, this has a viewing glass and you see it's nearly right there at the top of that mark. As long as you're within these two white marks on this sticker, you're gonna be just fine. Your oil is changed. Pop that cap back in and the first large portion of this maintenance is done. There's only one other lubricant we have to change and that is the lower unit oil on this small engine. And it's very easy to do. You got two bolts that are flatheads. You got one up here and the one down here on the bottom of this gear casing. So basically what you do with these, I like to go ahead and start with the top. I'm gonna to crack it open and I wanna make sure that the top comes off because if I undo the bottom, oil drains, but this is seized up, then I'm in trouble. Um, I'm gonna be up a creek without a paddle. So. That one has come loose, I'm good there. Now we go ahead and undo the bottom one and let the oil drain. I got it loose, I'll go ahead and undo it with my hand. Get this bolt out. And you see it's slowly drizzling down right there. Once you get started, you can remove this bolt and you're taking the vacuum off so it's gonna drain a lot easier. 
Now, what I'm looking for as this is pouring out is whether it's milky or not. This is a good, consistent color. It's not burnt or extremely dark. So, no issues there. Not being milky means that you haven't gotten water into the foot, um, which could be several things that could cause that. This small engine, it's really got to be the gaskets on this, but we're fine there. So, I'm going to just drain all this oil out. We'll fill it back up to this mark, and then we're done changing it. With all the oil drained, we're going to go ahead and refill it. There's two ways to do it with this engine. You can get a small uh, squirt bottle of ADW90. In this case, that comes in a tube. That'd be the quick and easy way for a small lower unit like this. However, I have one of these pumps. Since I have a little bit larger engine, a 40 Tahatsu as well as 115 Mercury, this is a godsend and it works on the majority of outboards out there. Makes the job a lot easier. So I have this small adapter piece right here. This comes with that pump. I want to screw that into the lower unit hole right there. With that in, all I'm going to do is take the pump, put it into my bottle of gear lube. This might be a little bit off camera. Screw that lid in. And the thing about ADW90, it's a viscous oil. So if you fill it from the top, you could get air bubbles. You're not filling it up all the way. The reason you fill this up all the way is that oil displaces water. So if you have this half filled, then water could get in possibly, and then it, there's nothing to displace it. So it's going to corrode metal, especially in saltwater environments. So when you fill this entire thing up with oil, it makes sure to place as much water as possible. But you just go ahead and pump it. And what I'm waiting for is to see oil come out of this hole right here. And that tells me that the entire lower unit is full. So right there, I just saw a little bit of oil come out of that top. I want to slowly pump it, make sure it is filled or fills an air bubble. And as I'm pumping it, a little bit more is coming out. So I know the lower unit is filled. Now what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to do the top oil level cap, which has a gasket on it. Start it by hand as always, so I don't mess up the threads. And once that vacuum is made, it'll allow me enough time to go ahead and easily remove this and put the other cap in quickly so I don't lose too much gear oil. You're gonna lose a little bit, but it won't be. That's plenty tight, don't over tighten that. Then we'll go ahead and remove this. And that is torqued and tightened. I want to go ahead and clean off the lower housing and that way I can verify that there's no leaks and the gear oil's changed. The last thing we have for today is we got to change the spark plug on this engine. This has to be done every three years. Well, it's a 2021. I don't know if the previous owner did it. So I did it earlier today when testing out the new carburetor, but I'm going to show you how to do it with just a wrench. Now, I do have some spark plug sockets that make this job a heck of a lot easier. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring them with me. So I'll show you how to do it with just a wrench. It's a couple of extra steps, extra bolts, but still easy enough to do. Now, if you're interested in getting a 5 8 inch uh, spark plug socket, as well as that pump or any of the gear I'm using today, I'm gonna go ahead and link all of that, including the oils uh, in the description below, as well as leave a link somewhere up here in the corner as well to those items. And that way you have an easy place to go to to get all the tools you need to do this job. So all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the spark plug boot off a little, little rubber shield came off as well I'm just going to set that to the side and fortunately like I said since I don't have that spark plug socket this 30 second job just turned to about a 10 minute job and for the inexperienced about 30 minute so we're going to have to remove the gas stick in order to get to that you got three bolts you got one here one here and one back here go ahead and close that vent off so you don't spill gas especially if your tank is filled and then we're just going to remove these three bolts and hang the gas tank off to the side. So out real quick, we'll set them to the side. So that one out. There we go. Put that fuel tank. This one's pretty empty. I'm just going to set it to the side like that. And now we have enough access to the spark plug. We can use an open head wrench. Now with an open head wrench, we got that spark plug right here. It's going to be a little bit tight, but you can just come in. I'm going to move it down as much as I can. I want to have to 
come to the side a little bit because of the crankcase getting in the way. But it is possible. I'll bring it down as much as I can. There we go. Camera died right as I was removing the spark plug, but taking the spark plug out, take a look at it. Like I said, this is new. I see it's a little white on top, so that actually means it's running a little bit lean. So I'm going to adjust the fuel mixture ratio a little bit. It's a little bit more advanced, but basically you're going to turn it counterclockwise to open it up and clockwise to restrict fuel. So I want to open it up a little bit more, but anywho, that's how you change it out. Now we got the old one out. This is an NGKR DCP R6C. You see these pretty commonly. You just get another one of these for like five bucks. Once again, I'll link that part. You're just going to pop it back in. You want to make sure to tighten it to where you're crimping this crush washer and you're good to go. Pop that poop back on. You're off to the races. Once you get it pretty snug, that's plenty snug enough. As mentioned, put that boot back there in that guide. And pop it back on. Make sure it's seated all the way down. And we're good to go to go ahead and throw the gas tank back on. With that, maintenance is done. There's one grease point on the front. I don't have my grease gun, but it's a nipple fitting. Really easy to do if you have a grease gun. Pop it on, uh, pump it till you start seeing grease come out. You're good to go. Pop that back on. Let's move this engine to the test tank and see how it performs. Go ahead and open up the vent on top. Make sure gas can get through. There's not much gas in here. I'm going to drain this tank out once I'm done here. I got my fuel on. Oil level looks good. I'm going to pull the choke out. I'll crank this thing over, see if we can get it started. Wanted to. Go. I'm going to put that choke in, put it on restart because it's just cough. Don't want to flood it. A little bit more gas. And there we go. Had to give it a little bit more throttle. It seems to like it a little bit more in that restart position. I can change the linkage if I wanted to, but that's fine. Just open throttle a little bit more. Pouring water out of the back, so I'm looking at the inlet. I'm checking the two hoses on the rear. I don't see any overflow of gas, so carburetor is good. And it's idling beautifully. Now we'll go ahead and rev it, make sure the carburetor is able to keep up. It might struggle a little bit since it's not completely warmed up, but. Very good throttle response. Not much more can be said about that. Go ahead, kill it real quick. It's warmed up a little bit. We'll try restarting it. Restart position. Perfect. Well, that is about it. Maintenance on this thing is extremely easy. Anybody could really do it. But guys, I do hope y'all enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If you did, please make sure to share, like, subscribe for more. And as always, thanks for watching.